all of the narcissist sources of supply are related to anybody and anything that wins the narcissist attention. And that attention may come with either a negative or positive charge. Attention is vital oxygen for the narcissist because it is used specifically to regulate their very um, extremely fluctuating self-worth and uh, sense of self that goes up and down in frequency drastically, dramatically. The narcissist stabilizes this hyper-idealized self-image or the mask by hearing people reflect how omnipotent they consider them to be and are especially happy when that level fits with their own image of themselves. So the primary source of narcissistic supply. The term primary supply applies to all of those people that are almost always intimate partners with the narcissist, and they provide the narcissist with the attention they crave on a casual and random basis. These will be the people that the narcissist invests most heavily in at the start of the relationship, of course. Eventually, they will tire of this source and then look for a shiny new replacement. They are especially drawn to empaths because they are strong, altruistic, problem solvers, sensitive, kind, dependable, and nurturing. And for the narcissist, their primary source is their most important form of narcissistic supply. They provide them with the most intimate relationships they experience because they have the greatest emotional charge attached to them. These are the people that will go to the greatest lengths to hook using... Um, an excessive amount, amount of seduction and manipulation to entice them into their web of deception. Uh, this is also known as the love bombing stage. This primary source of supply provides the narcissist with the greatest emotional reactions to their outrageous behavior as well. Therefore, they prize them as their highest oxygen providers. Remember this, there is only one primary source available to them at any given time. And this is partly due to the rush of excitement uh, being enough, but also because they must invest so much time in the seduction and manipulation of this person who is currently a uh, flavor of the month, for lack of a better word. And the nature of the attention they provide can be experienced in either a public form, such as fame, celebrity, notoriety, or infamy, or in a private form, such as admiration, flattery, acclaim, fear, and repulsion. Even being notorious equates to being renowned, and as you can see, it does not matter whether the attention is positive or negative, as one is as good as the other, just as long as the narcissist is at center stage. Their primary source of supply are the people who will suffer the most at the hands of the narcissist when things eventually do go wrong, and the ones they unleash the most extreme narcissistic rage and devaluation tactics on. Even after this person who was the primary source has escaped or has been discarded for, um, by the narcissist, they will keep trying to hoover and weasel their victim back into the relationship or a relationship of some kind so they can have a hold over, the, over them. Because they invested so much time and energy in the beginning in that primary source, they feel entitled to keep reeling them in for um, to, to keep drawing more oxygen, more narcissistic fuel out of them, whether it is now, next month, or 10 years from now. Secondary sources of supply. Secondary sources of narcissistic supply pertains to those people who are a constant presence in the narcissist's life. They provide the narcissist with regular supply, um, such as a spouse, children, subordinates, dependents, friends, family, colleagues, and are strictly for backup purposes only. They are the first people the narcissist will turn to when they encounter difficulties with the primary source of narcissistic supply. And... Um, People often ask the question, why do narcissists get married when they clearly do not love their spouse? And the answer is simple enough. Although narcissists prefer the highly charged dynamic of their primary source of narcissistic supply, uh, the inevitability of things going wrong, um, for example, they may suddenly become bored or they may fall out with the person because they are not getting what they want from them. Suddenly, they will, sl they will swing from the idealization phase uh, where the individual can do no wrong to the devaluation stage to where the individual can do nothing right and the narcissist instantly disconnects. Whenever their primary source of supply is unavailable, they will turn to the secondary sources of supply, most especially their significant others, their wife, husband, children, to be recharged so they go in search of a new source of primary supply. This is their constant pattern of behavior, and they interact frequently with these people getting their supply of oxygen from them, but not to the extent that they would with their primary source of supply. 
The job of the primary source is to accommodate and give the pathological narcissist a secure existence and to contribute to making them look like they are leading a very normal and well-adjusted life. For example, this provides the illusion that they have the companionship of a partner or a spouse that fills them with pride and helps them stand out in the outside world. Also being able to show evidence of a secure existence when they are, uh, where they are financially secure and socially acceptable. So they train the, the secondary sources of supply to support them in their charade. It is the personality of the supply person that determines what type of supply they become. So empaths often fulfill these secondary roles as well as being the sources of, of, of uh, primary supply. It is the secondary sources that tend to last uh, the, the test of time. That is because the narcissist um, only calls on them intermittently, especially at times when they have just discarded their primary source of supply. Nothing pleases a narcissist more than knowing that the um, victim is still grieving for the narcissist, and most especially after going through their painful discarding process. Even if the victim was the one to end the relationship by discarding the narcissist, they can still derive pleasure in knowing that their supply has not been able to move on without them. And just when the victim begins to feel that their narcissistic um, partner has finally gone like the proverbial boomerang, they will return again and again at varying intervals and trigger their pain. The pathological narcissist hopes to either hook the victim again or disturb their peace. One way or the other, they will keep the victim's wheels spinning forever. Whatever the victim's response, they will use their response to provide them with information on how to carry out their next Hoover, depending on how the land lies, their next approach may come directly from them or may, uh, or they may control and abuse by proxy or third party, employing one of their flying monkeys to carry out the task on their behalf. Sometimes there is no reason for them to do the hoovering behaviors, and this is likely to be when they already have ongoing contact with the victim, perhaps because of the visiting rights around children, or they may be in the exciting rush of getting a new source of supply, so the task of hoovering does not even enter the headspace of the narcissist, um, because they are, they are all involved in the thrill of a, a new conquest. And once again, it will be the pathological narcissist that will control when to employ the hoover tactic, or not to, against the victim. Okay, so the territory sources of supply. Uh, this pertains to a lower source of uh, supply for a narcissist, and most often they are perfect strangers or acquaintances. They are a useful set of individuals that the narcissist can turn to when they need a very quick boost of supply, or whether they need an instant supply or po a positive energy or as a source of focus for discharging negative energy. These supply sources are especially useful when the narcissist suddenly loses their primary source of supply temporarily. For example, a, a client arranged to meet her narcissistic mother in a local cafe, and the meeting was a bit stressful for them both as it was the first time they had met in months following friction between them. However, the meeting was going well, as hoped by my client, who was con consciously working hard to provide her mother with attention and a lovely gift. At one point, my client, the mother's primary source of supply, excused herself to go to the ladies' restroom. When she returned to the table a few minutes later, her mother was surrounded by several young waitresses engaged in laughing and talking with her, and they were admiring the gift that she had just received from her daughter and were telling her what a lovely lady she was. Clearly, in the absence of her primary source of supply, the narcissistic mother promptly replaced her daughter with a lesser source of supply. Uh, this source of supply applies to strangers or people the narcissist rarely sees. This is a very short blast of seduction. The way they smile at them, their interest, they show it in them. This would provide them with a temporary attention to prop up their ego and make them feel superior. They would have helped um, the narcissistic mother to discharge any stress that she may have been experiencing from the difficult meeting with her daughter and to rebuild that facade of being in control. They also serve a third function, and it is often carried out as a form of triangulation where it serves to, as a ploy to impress the other person of the narcissist's popularity. Um, unfortunately for them, in the interim, until the narcissist manages to secure their uh, new primary source of supply, they, um, they must bear the brunt of the narcissist's bizarre behavior in some cases. 
And should a narcissist recognize this source of supply as being an empath, they will go out of their way to promote them to a primary or secondary source of supply. They would most probably not be able to pass them over without trying to hook them, as empaths are the cream of the crop where a narcissist are concerned.